I'm going to begin, um, Simon Barsky. I mean, of course, I, I appreciate that when uh, Winnie the Pooh uh, first came out, obviously it was this kind of form of escapism. Just after the, the war, it gave people this kind of sense of hope. Uh, but then when I was growing up, I was obsessed with Winnie the Pooh as well. So, I mean, it's not just a form of escapism. There's something about it. And what do you think it is about this whole story and this world that uh, A.L. Milne created that is just so special to so many people? Yeah, I mean, that's a very good question. And uh, I think... The answer is everyone has a different version of why that's the case. And that's the wonderful thing about it. And it's also the, the stories mean different things to you at different parts of your life, different ages. Uh, and I think the variety of characters, each with their very distinct personalities, everyone identifies with at least one of them. But at the heart of it is there's this boy having a magical time in his childhood with these magical toys or magical friends, basically. And I think that's uh, an eternal theme. Because that's that a limitless kind of imagination, isn't it, that he's got that's so sort of yes. uh, endearing. Yes. And the fact that I think if we if we had to come up with a name for, for an animal that, that was a tiger, we'd spend days kind of scrutinising over it. He just says, Tigger. Exactly. I yeah. And I think one of the things I most enjoy about watching the film with an audience is the moments like that, where it's just like an, exa an, an accidental throwaway moment. But it's become this iconic thing. I mean, the film has got this kind of a, very, a great charm to it. It's a kind of un uh, enchanting kind of undercurrent. But at the same time, you have juxtaposed it with, with war. I mean, how is yeah. that balance finding it? Where, where this film has, is very kind of family friendly. It's very easy to indulge in. But at the same time, there's quite sort of harsh themes being explored as well. Yeah, well, uh, that's right. And I mean, that was both sort of attractive and scary. And it, to, to tell you the truth, we shot more war stuff than we actually ended up with in the final cut because we felt a little of it went a long way. And also, there was this kind of pertinence, I mean, in the sense that, I mean, uh, um, Christopher Robin, really, in so many regards, was one of the first kind of child superstars in this country. Totally. totally. And I watched, only recently, I watched the, the documentary Amy and saw how the kind of media scrutiny really kind of, on her and her family, I mean, they, is that another angle to this this story? Very much going? so. I mean, I mean, you've actually all my answers you're telling me in advance <laughs> uh, because that, that's exactly right. That um, uh, you know, Christopher Robin, I think, alongside the young Queen actually and Shirley Temple were the first ever child celebrities. And of course, in those days, they didn't know what to expect. Whereas you could argue with someone like Amy, uh, they do know what to expect. It's one of the more poignant aspects of, of, of Goodbye, Christopher Robin. Just how good is I mean, Will Tilston? I mean, obviously this is his first film, but he's just incredible in this movie. I know. I can't believe how lucky we were. I mean, obviously we went on a long process to find him. Uh, but even then, you're, it's a voyage into the unknown. You don't know what you're going to get. And he's, all I can say is he's a magical kid, and I was very lucky to have him in the film. Because, I mean, Spielberg's always said that it takes a long time to cast children in movies, and obviously it's something he's had to do quite a lot. When can you, because like you said, it is always a voyage into the unknown, because you don't know how they're actually going to be yeah. on set. So what was it about him, and just in that audition, that made you feel he'd be the right choice? Uh, well, he was a lovely boy who I really liked, so that helped. Uh, and we did a clever thing. Our last audition was at the location with Donal, with a small crew, and we did five or six scenes to see if he could jump from a happy scene to a sad scene or whatever. Uh, and he just rose to the challenge, and uh, I, I wish him a, a brilliant career ahead if he wants to do it. And as for for Margot Robbie, of course, this, when when um, casting this role, it wasn't the first actress that would have sprung to mind, but she does she's brilliant in, in in the part. I mean, I'm just wondering what it was about her as well that made you think she'd be the, the right choice. Well, I mean, she has her own relationship with the stories of Winnie the Pooh, and uh, 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 her parents or her mother used to read them to her, so that was lovely to hear. And she's a brilliant gorgeous actress uh, uh, who I was very lucky to cast. And also, you know, Daphne is a woman of her time. Daphne, the character she plays, is a, a very much a mother of that period. And uh, Margot's natural warmth uh, brings an extra dynamic to it. So I was very grateful for that too. And you mentioned that obviously she had her own uh, relationship with, with the stories of Winnie the Pooh. How, how about yourself? Did you, were you a big sort of fan when you were growing up reading the I wouldn't books? say I was a big fan. I would say, like most kids, I uh, had the stories read to me. And, you know, I treasure that memory. And what, what would you say is, the, have you, is there a particular children's book that you hold most sort of close to your heart? Mm, that's a good point. I mean, I'd say probably Winnie the Pooh was my favourite, yeah. You've really moved into cinema now because a lot of your career before, had been kind of TV movies and in TV. Mm. And this, I think this is the first time, if IMDb is correct, that you've done two back-to-back films about doing something, a television thing in between. I mean, is that something you've always... Is this well, I feel all the clever people are going from film to TV and I'm going in the opposite direction. <laughs> And uh, if, we're also asking lots of uh, directors and actors at the moment um, about if, if you could have uh, directed any film of all time, if there was one film that you wish uh, you'd done, which would it be? Annie Hall, without a shadow of a doubt. And just finally, what's next for you? Have you got anything in the pipeline? No, I, I'm, I've got a couple of interesting things brewing in America, and I hope one of them will come good. Well, thanks so much for your time today. Much really good. Cheers.